Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of all of Gary Grigsby's games. I only half jokingly say that. Uh, we are currently uh, playing a lot of Grigsby. <laughs> and before doing this, uh, or starting this stream, I was looking over War in the West once again with the hope of getting something up a little later, maybe today, maybe early tomorrow, uh, dealing with the air war in that game so that we're all ready for War in the East 2, uh, which will be coming very shortly, of course. Uh, that does bring up something else. If there is a game that you want me to play, that you would like to see a tutorial, a let's play, uh, whatever the case may be. I don't know how else you would play it, but, but whatever else you want within limits. We're PG-13 here. I will hopefully get to it. Now, I've been planning on doing Shadow Empire for a while. That kind of got pushed back. Uh, I've also wanted to do Distant Worlds Universe. So if you, you want to know the kind of games that I, I really enjoy, it's obviously these in-depth war games. They're my favorite games. Uh, but I do like um, city builders, survival, space games. We may play some Stellaris. Uh, I do like Stellaris, but I really like Distant Worlds Universe, and Distant Worlds 2 will be coming out later uh, this year, and so maybe I'll do a tutorial on Distant Worlds Universe. I think they'll be similar enough uh, that that could be helpful to a lot of people, kind of how we're doing the War in the East now for War in the East 2. Uh, Distant Worlds Universe may be the greatest 4X game ever. Well, I don't think maybe. I think it definitely is the best 4X game ever made if you kind of set civilization, the whole series aside, uh, as kind of being the granddaddy of them all. We also may play Humankind here. Uh, the new kind of civilization type game that will be coming out next month. So anyway, the point in all of this is, if there's something you want to see, let me know. Uh, I, I make no promises, uh, but if there is a groundswell of support for a certain game or a certain genre or whatever, uh, I, you know, I kind of enjoy all computer games to some degree. I started back on my old Commodore 64 and haven't stopped since and so you know I, i've played a lot of them uh and so at, at one time or another i've probably played almost uh, any game you can throw out there um hey david j russon how are you sir good day good to see you thanks for dropping by uh well let's get about this war in the pacific we've got things to do we resolved the turns on sunday so you know, what are we here on Friday? We've got to go. Now, I plan on doing another episode tomorrow. We've really covered a lot of the map here uh, this time, which makes me happy. I think it can also show you, if you're a new player, that once you get beyond that, that first 10 turns or so, the game starts to speed up. You know, it's like a, a ball rolling downhill. It kind of gathers steam because you've got, you know, half of your units to where they need to be and they're not moving. Not, I mean, not soon. Uh, and you get down to the point where you're coming into Karachi, uh, you're bringing stuff into Karachi, and you've got to constantly, you know, watch that. Uh, Cape Town to Perth, you've got to watch that. You've always got to watch your subs. Uh, and But then you can really start to, and you've also, also west coast of Pearl Harbor and Pearl Harbor to the small islands. Um, those are constants. You're going to be looking at those pretty much every turn. Uh, but as we get going here, you can see, you know, you just kind of go focus when it comes to ground units anyway on what's in the heat of the battle. Right now, that's Malaya. Now, we, we kind of, you know, jumped over here. We looked a little bit at Malaya, not, not a whole lot last time. Uh, so I did want to go down the Malayan Peninsula here really quickly. Uh, we did cover Sumatra over here, and then we'll get down to Java, Borneo, We'll go as far as we can here and get as much uh, as we can. Now, I do think that we did look at some of these because I remember looking at Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we still have one fighter sitting up here in Georgetown. That is probably a doomed fighter. I don't suspect he's ever going to get repaired in time to get him down with the rest of his squadron. Now, we got the rest of his squadron out, uh, and, and they will automatically follow. I say they. That plane will automatically follow its squadron. 
once it's repaired. Uh, but it's got to get repaired first, and we'll see if that can happen. Georgetown is getting bombed every turn, and if it gets repaired and there's no runway left, you know, what, what are we going to do? We can't walk it down to Singapore. Uh, I guess we could, could try to rail it maybe or something, but it's pretty much doomed. Uh, we have this infantry unit still over at Georgetown. I like that. It's only 24. Now, the, the gentleman in the 5 or 514th Punjab might not like it because this, again, is, is probably a doomed unit. They're here to hold maybe a turn, maybe two, hold out for a Japanese attack. Now, the Japanese do have to go across the water here into Georgetown. Not an easy place. I'm not going to claim it's an impregnable fortress. It is not. Uh, but, you know, it, it's got, it adds some challenges to the attack uh, on a 24 unit. Now, we do have some mines here. You see that. We've got the one plane. You see that. Now, that they have, the Japanese have moved west here. I suspect, you know, I don't know which of these units, you see a dark red, I say units, It's that is showing us that there are potentially 10 enemy LCUs here, so that's a pretty substantial force. You also see a lot of red down here, uh, this is probably two full divisions, so we are you know, coming under direct assault here in Malaya. We've got this one unit retreating out. We've got another holding unit here at Taiping. At Taiping, we've got 18 assaults. I mean, these, these units <coughs> aren't going to hold anything back, but they may delay it a turn, maybe two, uh, if we're being really hopeful about things. Um, all right. So we've got these, uh, this is holding, this is holding, this is moving back. We've got these units here in Temela. Uh, we've got an AA unit. Query whether we need it here. I, the idea is you just don't want these units getting bombed into submission. You want the Japanese to have to make a land attack on them. Uh, and so, you know, the, as much as we can keep the air off of them, the better they'll maybe last another turn or two. We've got an assault strength of 21 and 100 here. We've got the 22nd Indian Brigade, which is actually quite a strong brigade, uh, 100 in the combat value, hoping, and we've got the unit coming back here to, to you know, meet up with them. Hopefully that unit can hold out a few turns. Uh, down at Quantan, I like to, I just like to say that, Quantan, uh, you can see the airfield has been bombed down here. It's uh, bright red, uh, meaning it has sustained damage, and you can see 69 on the damage, 59 on the airfield service damage. Luckily, we are not running aircraft out of Quantan, uh, so, you know, let them bomb the airport all they want. I'd much rather them do that than bomb our little base force here, those poor gents. Uh, we have a lot of submarine activity out here to the east of Quantan. That is all by design, of course, right? Of course it's by design. Um, Barreled 713, howdy to you, howdy to you. Thanks for dropping by. To our regular War in the Pacific live stream, uh, back on the regular schedule, feeling good about it. Um, Yes, so we have all this submarine activity out this way. A lot of these are Dutch. I think maybe all of them are Dutch. So, or eh, maybe not all of them. I guess we can go look. Whenever I say something like that, it always leads me to going and looking. Well, you can see they're gray. So that, those are Dutch. I know that one's Dutch. Uh, Dutch? 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 I feel like I'm playing like Duck, Duck, Goose uh, with Dutch people. Dutch? Uh, okay, those are all Dutch uh, subs great. Uh, this is a great place for them to be. Why is that? Well, of course, the Japanese are bringing reinforcements and supply over here to Malaya. They'll use this <clears throat> as their staging base once they finally take Singapore to launch into Sumatra, come after Palembang, maybe even, you know, move it in, you know, they just keep moving it south. Uh, but it all starts in Malaya here. Uh, so we've got these Dutch subs out here. They've done a good job so far. They've uh, sunk a few things. Uh, they're wreaking havoc here. I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, but they, they are good subs, and they have much better torpedoes than the Americans. And therefore, generally, when they do strike a hit, 
the torpedo actually explodes, uh, which is always very important, I've heard. I'm not a submariner, but I can only imagine that having your torpedo hit something and not explode would be uh, incredibly frustrating. Um, hey, we got uh, Evo Soul Games. Hello, how are you? Are the Dutch submarines better than the U.S.? I swear I launched into that little diatribe a moment ago and I had not read your question yet. I have a feeling they hit more targets than the U.S. ones. Yeah, early in the game, uh, they're, they're arguably better subs and they have far superior torpedoes. Now, how much that affects targeting, I do think they're a little better. Uh, but the main thing is, and, and we've talked about this before for for people that have been around, they've heard heard this, but the Mark 14 uh, torpedo for the United States was defective. It led to a huge scandal, a war commission, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, congressional inquiries, you know, little congressmen standing up and raising hell um, because they just were not designed properly and they did not explode. There are various reasons for that, depth reasons, uh, reach reasons, as far as you know how the fuse is set up in there. I, I don't know if fuse is the exact proper term. Uh, but anyway, they, the, oftentimes they hit and they don't explode, and that is very historically accurate. That's exactly what happened out here uh, in 1942, 41, 42, uh, eventually in 43, they got the problem corrected. And maybe even in later 42, uh, I think they had started to, to move out the Mark 14s because everybody at that point knew there was something wrong. Uh, and, and they started testing them to figure out what that was. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the Dutch subs are better just overall, for sure. Um, yeah, we, uh, we've got more subs down here. We haven't looked at the subs for a little while. Maybe I'll do that next week as well. You see even another sub there. That's another Dutch sub that we're kind of putting out in this area, thinking that, you know, the Japanese may start sending mine layers down here. Who knows? Who knows where they may land? They may not land down here at all. Um, many times they'll land at Mersing. I find that human players like to land at Mersing. Kota Baru then they land at Mersing. So uh, what the AI does, I don't know. I mean, they're not going to land directly at Singapore. I mean, I guess they, they could try, uh, but that's probably a fool's errand. Um, okay, so we've got Temela. We've got Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff here at Kuala Lumpur. Uh, let's see what it all is. Uh, we've got the 3rd Indian Corps headquarters, Okay. Uh, that's under Lieutenant General Heath. Lewis, uh, it's just, I think that's hyphen, or um, shortened there. Is that Mackle something? Uh, anyway, under Heath here, he is not really inspiring the troops, as you can see. His inspiration score is a 19, but that is the headquarters of 3rd Indian Corps, and we've got a lot of stuff from 3rd Indian Corps here. We have it other places as well on the map. It's a huge core. Um, we've got some AA. That's great. Uh, we need some AA at Kuala Lumpur. It will continue to come under heavier, heavier and heavier Japanese bombing uh, as we progress. Uh, as they start to come down uh, the peninsula, they will be trying to hit everything they can in Kuala Lumpur. Now, we have no planes left here, so every little bit of AA we have there is going to help. Uh, because we don't really have much air cover. We may have some coming out of Singapore if they've got long enough ranges for their cap, uh, but that's real hit or miss. That's a, you know, it's a pretty long flight. Um, we've got first Mysore Battalion that's sitting here. Uh, that's part of the Malayan Army. It's got 14 assault strength, not going to, you know, set the world on fire. We've got two base forces here as we start try to build these fortifications as fast as we can. Now, we'll probably get one of them out of here soon and send it down to Singapore to continue building at Singapore and try to, you know, turn that into Fortress Singapore. Uh, but right now, we've got them in Kuala Lumpur because the Japanese kind of have to go through Kuala Lumpur. Um, and that's why I mentioned earlier, you see a lot of humans land in Mersing. Uh, a, lot of hum a lot of human players land in Mersing. Uh, because 
if you just kind of look at how this is set up, you've got this big inlet river here uh, that takes a lot to move across. And so they, they sort of have to go this way, which funnels them down and allows us to concentrate our forces. If you land at Mersing as a Japanese player, well, you can kind of see the situation. You're right on top of Singapore. You've cut off uh, any troops that would like to retreat back to Singapore, or you start to anyway, once you come across this highway. Uh, and so, it, to me, as a Japanese player, I would come to Mersing and, and put a landing force there. We'll see what the AI does. Uh, what else do we have here? We have uh, an AT gun regiment. Look at this nice big old anti-tank gun. That should get through some armor. We'll see. Uh, that is a, okay, regiment, right? That's part of 3rd Indian Corps. Then we have the 6th Indian Brigade, which is part of 3rd Indian Corps. That's got an assault strength of 104. So, you know, substantial. We've got another 104 unit, the 15th Indian Brigade. So 3rd Indian is, is representing out here in Malaya, as the kids say. 3rd uh, Indian Corps, again, here with 28th Gurkha. Uh, they've got a 111. Uh, really nice, really nice. Uh, they've kind of built up, all of these units have kind of built up to full strength out here. We may turn on Indian, Indian Infantry Section and allow replacements. Now, we'll have to make sure we don't have all of those Indian Infantry units um, over in India itself turned on, and we don't. We've got pretty much everything on no replacements now, but I think maybe next turn, will start to uh, put replacements into these. And that's kind of how you work that production system. You have everything stockpiling, okay? And then you say, what do I need and where do I need it? Then you can turn off the stockpile. Then you go down to the individual units. And if you see here, if you're not, you know, if you're kind of new to the game, down here, we've got no replacements right now. Uh, I'm actually just going to turn it on now. Uh, and when we open up the stockpile, it'll be ready to go. Uh, let's do that with some of these 3rd Indian Corps units, as a matter of fact, now that I'm talking about it. Let's turn the replacements on for them. Uh, if you think about it logically, there's if the Japanese do attack India, uh, and they may, you know, when you play a human player, they generally get up near Chittagong or up in that area, uh, then we can worry about that at that point but right now these are the indian units that in the near future maybe not immediate but in the near future are going to need replacements to the extent we can get them to them uh and so we might as well turn those on um oh bayard hey that's good information okay i wasn't sure about what the exact percentages were the mk14 failure rate uh Hold on. I'll be right. Oh, whoa, whoa. I missed some chat. Um, that's right. Oh, no problem. Th uh, you're kind of new to the chat as far as I know, Evo. And, and so we're always very helpful here. A lot of knowledgeable players, a lot, just knowledgeable human beings here. They have all kinds of knowledge that they throw my way every day. Um Why not pull the forces around Penang down south before cutoff, says Stanley. Uh, let's go. We'll go look at that for one sec, Stanley. Uh, okay, so Bayard said the MK-14 failure rate gets reduced by 20% in January of 43 and gets set to 10% by September of 43, both automatically. Excellent. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um and that's you know just following the historical uh, the historical history. Can you say those two words together? The historical history of the MK14 torpedo, which was just an absolute travesty that all of that happened. Uh, there, uh, I'm sure, are some good books about that. Um, Evo says, also I have another question. If I remember correctly, the Repulse and the Prince of Wales survived Singapore and got out. And I think they met up with the Hermes. Is there a good long-term strategy for these ships? Would it be a good strategy to move them to the east side of Australia and later join the U.S. ships? Or is it better to use them as an independent task force on the west side? Excellent question. Uh, yes, they did get out. We have not looked at them for a while, but they're, you know, sort of around this region. Uh, 
<laughs> you may remember, I don't, I don't know if you've caught up with it, but a, a couple of episodes ago I said, hey, what's the Prince of Wales and Repulse doing over here? They had just kind of floated off to the edge of the map, <laughs> you know? And the reason for that was, is once we got them out, my idea was, well, if they get damaged at all, we're going to sail them all the way to Cape Town. And so I had that order on, and they floated for a couple more turns uh, before I turned them around. And here you see them, the, the whales, the repulse, the vampire. What's the vampire? Oh, vampire has a two ASW. Eh, okay. Uh, here they are. Here they are. And so I wish I could unzoom, zoom out in this game. But as you see, they're moving at a pace that probably gets them into Colombo in about five turns, approximately. Uh, what am I going to do with these? Well, I'm going to hide them. <laughs> That's my strat. That's my short-term strategy, anyway. If you look at the Prince of Wales, um, it's got incredible anti-aircraft. 1084. I mean, you're talking top, top-notch stuff here uh, with 1084. Uh, it's a 200-point ship. Let's look at the Repulse really quickly as well. Um, and the Repulse has 348. Okay, uh, you know, that that's good. That's good. It's better than the vast majority of our cruisers that we have right now, at least. So those are both very good ships. It's great that we save them. Uh, why did I jokingly say I'm going to go hide them at Colombo? Because I'm essentially hiding most of the British uh, fleet that we have on the board here up here at Colombo because we don't have strength enough. We don't have the right mix of ships and the strength enough to take on any kind of Japanese task force, really. Um, could those guys slug it out with a, you know, a battleship task force from the Japanese uh, for a little bit, but we don't have enough supporting ships, not enough destroyers to put with them and whatnot. So I'm just kind of putting them up here for the time being. Now, eventually, we could do two things, and I think you hit on one of them. Uh, the other is we could kind of patrol the Bay of Bengal out here. Uh, we do have the Hermes up here, so we would have a little bit of carrier, but it's not the kind of carrier you necessarily are in love with. We could fly missions out of Port Blair that do long-range cap, <laughs> which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Like, we've got a carrier out here. We're going to run long-range cap over the carrier from a base. Now, this is a tiny airfield, so you're not going to get many missions up. You could potentially do it out of Colombo if you keep this fairly, kept the task force fairly close. Um, but you probably put your finger on the best use for them, which is to get them down here on the east side of Australia eventually, maybe up into a place like uh, Nomaya to give anti-aircraft support because that battleship, the Prince of Wales, has such good anti-aircraft. I don't know what the equivalent in planes that would be, planes flying cap, you know, or what the equivalent to an AA unit, an LCU would be, but that's a massive amount of anti-aircraft. So we may eventually, you know, bring it down here as you suggest. I think that's, uh, I think that's solid. Um... Oh, hey, is it Shaunus? 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 I'm going to say Sean US 82. How about that? Welcome. Thanks for dropping by. We have a great time on these streams. Uh, do appreciate it. Uh, do, 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 do. That's right, Bayard. Yeah, they do. They need air cover it's from something. And it's not going to come from the Hermes, right? So you've got to put a. You either have to put them kind of at a base that's got a lot of planes that can fly over the top, um, or you have to, you know, you can't really mix and match aircraft carriers like that, or I wouldn't. It's so ahistorical to, like, put the Prince of Wales in with a U.S. Uh, assault fleet. Uh, it just, that's just not how things happen, really. Um, <laughs> the Bismarck. <laughs> Where is the Bismarck? Uh, all right, back to uh, back to the state of play in Malaya. Uh, Stanley had a question. I think you said, why not get these out of here? Maybe from, was it from here? Padang? Padang? Why can't I off the top of my head remember Padang? Where is Padang? From here? Padang? Uh... So 
Let me think of what you're talking about, Stanley. And I don't mean that flippantly. Um, hold on. Let's go look for this base, first of all. For some reason, I just can't find it. Oh, from this padang? And move him south? Was that what you were saying? Did I, did I completely misread what you said, Stanley? I'm sorry if I did. I don't want to... I don't want to falsely attribute something to you. I'll find it here. Oh, Padang is the island. Georgetown is the town. Oh, well, don't confuse me like that, Stanley. Uh, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. So you're, you're basically saying, do we get these out of here? Uh, you can. You can. I leave them here. Again, I don't know that we'll be cut off. Um, you know, this unit is moving here, but what I think is likely to happen is we're going to get attacked here. This unit